Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be revising some questions from Religious Education 2019. If you're preparing for mathematics final exams, get copies of the mathematics e-pamphlets by Mr. Six Points. The pamphlets cover all the topics that appear in the final exam in both paper 1 and paper 2. Details to get the pamphlets are in the description box below. Okay, so let's begin with question number 1. Narrate the story of how Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan. So this narration is from the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 7. Now the snake was the most cunning animal that the Lord had made. The snake asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, the woman answered, except the tree in the middle of it. God told us not to eat the fruit of that tree or even touch it. If we do, we will die. The snake replied, That's not true, you will not die. God said that because he knows that when you eat it, you will be like God and know what is good and what is bad. The woman saw how beautiful the tree was and how good its fruit would be to eat. And she thought of how wonderful it would be to become wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband and he also ate it. As soon as they had eaten it, they were given understanding and realized they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and covered themselves. Then part B, why did the temptation of Adam and Eve become sin? Step two points. So we can say they disobeyed God's command by eating the forbidden fruit. Then they also yielded to the temptation. And then CI, the head teacher informed parents during the PTA meeting that he was very concerned because of minibus drivers and sugar daddies frequenting the school who encouraged girls to engage in sexual activities. What Christian advice would you give to the girls on how to resist the temptation? State three points. So the girls should make a firm decision and reject the evil intentions. They should pray with confidence in the name of Jesus to resist the temptation. They should run away from the place of temptation and submit to God. And then CII, how can young people avoid falling into temptations in tertiary institutions in modern Zama society? State three points. So they should avoid visiting bad websites. They should avoid reading or watching pornographic materials. They should make a firm decision to reject evil things and they should also avoid bad company. And then D, in what ways are Christian teachings on temptation similar to that of Hindus? State two points. So in both, yielding to temptation should be avoided and also in both, they recognize that lust and greed are temptations. And then question number two, give an account of Jesus' prediction of his suffering and death. So this narration is from the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 21 to 27. Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell this to anyone. He also told them, The Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law. He will be put to death, but three days later he will be raised to life. And he said to them, If anyone wants to come with me, he must forgive himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his own life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Will a person gain anything if he wins the whole world? but is himself lost or defeated? Of course not. If a person is ashamed of me and of my teaching, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. I assure you that there are some here who will not die until they have seen the kingdom of God. Then part B, state lessons that Christians learn from the passage above. So Christ's followers must be prepared to suffer Christian discipleship is unselfish and self-giving every day. The one who wants to follow Christ must be ready to make sacrifices. And then finally, Jesus demands total commitment, which may include suffering. So you can just give any two points. And then CI, Lungowe has been a faithful Christian for a long time. She wonders why she has been experiencing suffering ever since she became a believer. She feels frustrated and intends to give up her faith. What Christian advice would you give Lungowe on why God allows Christians to suffer. There are three points. So you can say God allows Christians to suffer to test and purify a person's faith, to teach people to completely depend on God for everything. Those who live a godly life in this world will suffer persecution. Suffering is part of the cost of following Christ. And then to discipline people and teach them. So you can pick any three points. And then CII, state three strategies a family can employ during crisis or suffering to survive in modern Zamba society. The family can get help from extended family, encouragement from non-family members, seeking help from charitable organizations, 
and also the interdependence on other people. And then part D, in what ways are Christian teachings on temptation similar to that of Hindus? State two points. So Christians, suffering can come from God to test our faith, but much suffering is tragic and could not possibly come from a caring God. Then according to Hindus, everything comes from God, including suffering. Then Christians, accept suffering from the kingdom of God to test our faith, to prove that it is real. Hindus, suffering is a way to measure someone's strength of mind and soul. And then finally, Christians, all Christians suffer at times and it does not depend on the amount of holiness of someone, but God gives strength to enjoy it. Then in Hinduism, the more a holy person is, the greater the power to bear suffering. The question number three, describe how the apostles at Jerusalem sent Barnabas to keep the church at Antioch. So this narration is from the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 19 to 26. Some of the believers who were scattered by the persecution which took place when Stephen was killed went as far as Onesia, Cyprus and Antioch, telling the message to Jews only. But other believers who were from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and proclaimed the message to the Gentiles also, telling them the good news about the Lord. The Lord's power was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. The news about this reached the church in Jerusalem, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw how God had blessed the people, he was glad and urged them all to be faithful and true to the Lord with all their hearts. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he took him to Antioch, and for a whole year the two met with the people of the church and taught a large group. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. And then B, state two ways in which the persecution of the early Christians was a blessing to the early church. So you can say the persecution helped to spread the preaching of the gospel from Jerusalem to other places. The persecutions helped Christian Jews to overcome their traditional barrier of not accepting non-Jews. And then CI, during a church meeting, the chief tells the pastor and the church elders that the preaching of God's word and singing of hymns must be done in a local language of that area only. With reference to the work of the early church, state three ways in which the chief's attitude would hinder the spreading of the gospel. So we can say it would be deemed tribal, there will be contradiction with God's word, forbidding other languages is against God's will, anyone who hinders God's word will be punished, then before God, language, race or culture do not matter. So you can pick any three points. And then CII, what should be the ideal attitude and behavior of political cadres to the people who belong to other political parties, tribes, races, culture and languages in Zambian modern society? State three points. So you can say there should be no discriminations. People should work together. They should coexist and mix freely. They should be respectful of other people. Tolerance should be enhanced. And then part D, in what ways are Christian beliefs about the inclusion of people of different cultures similar to that of Zambian traditionalists? State two points. So all are welcome and there is no discrimination. And then all work for the common good of the community. And then question number four, relate the story of God creating man and woman. So this particular narration is from the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 to 25. Then the Lord said, It is not good for a man to live alone. I will make a suitable companion to help him. He took some soil from the ground and formed all the animals and birds. Then he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And that is how they got their names. So the man named all the birds and all the animals, but not one of them was a suitable companion to him. Then the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep and while he was sleeping he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the flesh he formed the woman out of the rib and brought her to him then the man said at last here is one of my own kind bone taken from my bone and flesh from my flesh woman is her name because she was taken out of man that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife and they become one the man and woman were both naked but they were not embarrassed that's the narration and then part b what are the biblical principles that should guide a christian in choosing a marriage partner state two points 
the principles should be a couple should wait until adequate support is available and then you should choose a marriage partner who is compatible with you then a marriage partner should not be chosen out of last and then ci john and jane have just completed school and decide to live together without the consent of their parents as a christian advise the two on the christian standards for sexual behavior the three points so we can say no sex before marriage there must be no unfaithfulness even after marriage immorality is a sin and people should exercise self-control christians should not even talk about sexual evils or moral indecency so you can pick any three points and then cii how do people in modern Zambian society look at a man and woman who are staying together but not officially married step three points so we can say they despise them then their parents ignore them and then they're seen to be committing fornication and then part d in what ways are christian teachings on the purposes of marriage similar to those of hindus step two points so we can say marriage is for reproduction of life and then both believe that marriage is seen as a partnership between the couple all right so that concludes this video where we're revising some questions from re 2019 if you've liked the video kindly give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already i'll catch you guys in the next video